The program we're looking at today is Freeware. It's been developed by Matt, who works for Microsoft as part of the OpenXR development team. But this program is not linked to Microsoft and he's released this in his personal capacity. It's the OpenXR Toolkit, an application designed to improve performance, visuals or both in VR for any headset that uses the OpenXR interface for VR. Welcome to the SimHanger, my name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. To save us both time, let's cut to the chase. Since the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator, there's been innumerable recommended tweaks and adjustments that you can make to improve your VR performance. Most of them have negligible, if any, impact on the reality in the headset. I haven't done a VR settings video for, well, I don't know, three or four months. And why? Because fundamentally, nothing's changed within Microsoft Flight Simulator and VR. We're all aware Microsoft and Asobo's attentions have been elsewhere, much to the frustration of VR aviators such as you and I. But what I can say is the OpenXR toolkit is definitely worth a look. It can improve your performance. And for those with low to medium spec machines, and if you're struggling to get a good performance with VR, then for now, the OpenXR toolkit could be just what you're looking for. On initial release, originally called the NIS Scaler, but now we're in Beta 2 and it's called the OpenXR Toolkit. If you want to know more about this application and how it works, including VR rendering, then check out my previous video link in the notes below. As I've already covered the basics in my earlier video, today we're going to focus on what's new. I've been using this application for a few days now, and as always, I've put it to the test, and I'll share my results, opinions, and views with you. Linked below will be where you can find and download the OpenXR Toolkit. If you've previously installed the NIS Scaler, please note you need to fully uninstall that before installing the toolkit. Not only has the program been updated, but there's now a wealth of information available to you on the site to help you get started, including detailed install on a step-by-step -step basis. Currently, this application is designed for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and there is now a guide taking you step-by-step -step through the different factors and explanations, including a number of guides that can help you with your settings and the process to follow. There's also notes on how the program works, and it does a much better job by explaining the rendering process than I did in my previous video. There's also guidance on how to disable in-game sharpening if you want to do so. Some users have said they get better clarity when doing this. I was happy enough with the results that I got, so I haven't tried this. But in all honesty, I have an aversion to playing around with core files within the simulator, so I've opted not to do so. If you were happy to do it, well, there's plenty of guidance here on where to find the file and what changes to make. For reference, these are my VR settings in the sim. My system is a RTX 3090 graphics card and a 10900K CPU with 32 gigs of memory. For testing, it's recommended the in-sim render scale is at 100 and the render scale in your OpenXR development tool for Windows Mixed Reality is also at 100 with the box checked, with adjustments being done in the OpenXR toolkit only and certainly initially until you establish settings that suit you. Under the System Status tab, you can also check that the OpenXR Toolkit has been installed correctly. It will indicate under API Layers as indicated. Having a strong system, you'll note that my settings are fairly high, with things such as terrain level of detail and pre-caching and texture resolution set to Ultra with the balance being set mainly to high or medium. I'm sometimes asked, can't I run everything at Ultra? Well, yes I can, but it degrades performance, and why would I want to? I'm in VR, and my headset resolution is 2160 by 2160 per eye. With the possible exception of clouds, the difference between high and Ultra, well, I just can't see it. I want set and forget settings. I have neither the time nor the inclination every flight to come in and change the settings. If I had a Vajo Aero, well, things may be different, but I don't. I've got a HP Reverb, and high is good enough for me. 
One of the major changes with Beta 2 is when you activate the program now, you have the option to change a number of settings, but no longer do you have the slider bars. Because now you can do everything in VR with a VR menu. This makes it much quicker and much easier. Let's take a look. We're in VR in the Mixed Reality window, so you're seeing what I'm seeing. You bring up the Toolkit menu by hitting Ctrl F2. You also use this key to move down and to change the parameters, positive or negative, use Ctrl F1 or Ctrl F3. My menu selection is currently on overlay and using Ctrl F3 I'm going to select FPS so my FPS counter shows. So we can see here I'm getting 36 frames per second. I should mention I have motion reprojection off in my OpenXR development tools for Windows Mixed Reality because this gives me a better performance. However, depending on what system you have, you should experiment with both motion reprojection on and off. If you are going to have motion reprojection on, then you need to ignore the FPS counter, as it can't read the interlaced frames. I'm not going to cover all the items here, but let's highlight the more important ones. Firstly, the upscaling using the NVIDIA NIS or the AMD FSR. But here's a note. You can try FSR with the NVIDIA card and vice versa for the AMD cards. You should try both. I found NIS worked best for me. FSR actually gave me an extra frame or two, but there was the odd micro pause here and there. The factor is where you decide on how much to downscale the native resolution. And this has the biggest positive or negative impact on performance. Sharpness is a very important part of this application and some time needs to be spent in getting the settings just right. Although you're downscaling the resolution, by adjusting the sharpness you can get a much, much clearer image, both inside and externally. But you should also note that sharpness is a bit of a frame hog. The higher you go, the bigger the penalty. World Scale does what it says on the tin. It can make your cockpit a little smaller or a little larger. You may find it advantageous to use this with some third-party aircraft, but the default aircraft, in my opinion, they don't really need it. Scaling is about right. Prediction dampening is an interesting and useful option. This is particularly relevant to something like the HP Reverb G2. Some people feel that the movement is far too sensitive. I haven't really experienced this, but some people say they even feel that the headset is moving in time with their heartbeat. Hmm, must be a tricky landing then. But anyway, you can turn this down, and according to the notes, anything between minus 20 and minus 40 seems to have helped. The settings that you're seeing on screen now are the settings that I've settled on. I'm using the NIS Upscaler, with a factor of 85%, sharpness is at 30, gives me a nice clear image, and I don't suffer from all the shimmer problems. As soon as I go over 30%, I start getting that shimmer coming back in again. Not sure if that's going to be my final setting, but it's certainly going to be somewhere between 20 and 30%. If you're using FSR, you may find you need to turn up that sharpness level a little higher. I tested out the prediction dampening, but I can't really see much of a difference, to be honest. The rest of the items here are fairly self-explanatory, and we won't delve in those today. Regular subscribers will be familiar with my standard stress test. In the G36 with the G1000 panels, Depart Makes Field, and then overhead downtown Chicago. Through the buildings, through the towers, and then climb out. I won't inflict the whole two and a half minute flight on you, here are just some screen grabs with the FPS counter showing to indicate the level of performance I achieved, which was smooth, stutter free, with a slightly better frame rate than I've had before, and better clarity. The toolkits worked for me. As I've mentioned before, those with lower to medium systems are likely to get the most benefit out of this app. Because of my stronger system, well, the benefits that it gave me, well, they're there. They're not massive, but good enough for me to retain it on my system and use it regularly. Oh, by the way, if you're wanting to test for shimmer, I suggest you fly over water, midday and clear skies. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon, and bye for now.